So, what should we start with? Hi, everybody. I would like to uh, do a little strength spotting for a gentleman who uh, kayaked upon me uh, <laughs> during my very zen, peaceful intell um, intellection is not in my top five, but I choose to find it yeah. a moment, and he wanted to chat. And I feel like a lot can be said about people's nonverbals. If you are aware of people's nonverbals, if you are aware of the signals they're giving you, me putting headphones in would be as strong nonverbal as to, I really don't want what to talk, talk to you. <laughs> or anyone. That's why I have headphones 90% um, of the time when I sit at my desk because I sit across from my I was just going to say that. You do have your headphones in. I That's a generational thing. Um, I was going to there say. There we go. She had a million. Well, that was easy enough. Okay, so why? I think because for me, and, and I think it also limits to my strengths, um, because adaptability, there's something about adaptability that makes me and other people with it hyper aware of the present. I am like so aware when people walk that. in a room or um, when anyone sneezes or if someone is shaking their leg when I'm sitting at a table with them even if they're across the way like I am just like hyper aware of everything um, and I think and I have it really high and like adaptability um, pretty high and that's just also the way it manifests for me like that might not be exactly how adaptability looks to someone else but part of adaptability is being aware of what's going on around you and so I think I'm just literally hyper sensitive to the situation, temperature in the room, if someone is walking above me, like I, there's not great insulation in the floors with the apartment above mine, and I'm just like, I can hear when they're walking in the kitchen and I'm in my bedroom, the floor below, so anyway, so I just am like really aware of anything that's going on around me, okay. and so for me, to put headphones in, or to put something in, it is like a barrier between what is going on around. Like it gives okay. me a quasi sense of focus because that is my one and only distraction and I can like control that distraction almost. That helps it's me a lot. Because like, the direction you were going, I was like, if you're hyper aware, wouldn't any little thing then, especially headphones or a podcast or whatever, just completely yeah. take you off track, but it's a barrier that helps you focus. Yeah, so it's like, it's a distraction to it's like one thing to help control for the other distractions. It's like the one, like if it's music, and oftentimes like when I, so people ask like, oh, you listen to music when you study, like, or you know, when you're reading, like I, I put nonverbal music on. So I'll put piano music or instrumental music or, um, and even like it could be music with lyrics too, but it can't be music with lyrics that I know. And, and just like little, mm. just like little yeah. things like that. And so, um, but it's like, it is in itself a distraction, but it's one I can control because I know the music is going to play. It's not like if someone started playing music out there because that would be a distraction that would then divert my attention from my task. This is one that helps me stay on task because it helps control the outside distractions. And you think that you have that gift, I mean, obviously because of adaptability, but do you also think it's because of your generation? Because sure. you've always been mm -hmm. surrounded by multiple... Yeah. Like you can't, there are very, very few places like in my life growing up and now in our current culture where you can totally isolate yourself from any interruption and distraction. And I think that people in my generation, even though to, to an outside person putting in headphones while you're working may seem like offensive or may seem like, oh, they must not be fully concentrating because they're also listening to music. You know, so they can't. It's it's a way to center focus, a way to um, to cut out other distractions, because it helps. It, it kind of brings you. And when you think about music too, I mean, we had a whole session when we talked about music. It brings a different environment and a di right. different atmosphere to anything you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
it's like putting yourself in a story, like in a book or in a television show or in a movie. Like music brings you to a different state of being. I almost think Great. because you're like your 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 mind and your will and your emotions and and your spirit. It's all like together focused on that because you have this sound that's kind of pervading mm-hmm. that. So, well, and I typically don't put my headphones in when I work out, except for at the gym. And I've never taken my headphones kayaking ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I found is Alabama Shakes is a really great way to get, I mean, it was the song Dunes. I was, ju- it was so tempo good. upbeat, slowed it down, it was awesome. Yeah. But what you said about noise, there was a CBS Sunday morning um, piece not that long ago where they're trying to go find places that are absolutely silent. Mm-hmm. And they're so few, so few because of air traffic, because of you know highway traffic. But you think about like if you go, um, camping or you go even um, hiking, you can't get that utter silence. Yeah. And then I think I'm more tuned to the outside sounds when it's super, super quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I can play music when I clean the house. I can play music when I um, work out. Uh, but I can't play music if I have to think. Because mm-hmm. I'm too into the music. Clearly, start my life. Um, great segue, kind of, into, not really, <laughs> not really, no, <laughs> but let's call it that, shall we? Let's call it a great segue into, uh, Love Crazy Envy. You were going to strike spot, though, your kayak. Back. Oh, that okay. was the whole point of this. We're getting on these really long tangents today. Coming back on. He, he clearly had woo communication as a blend, um, and frankly, it irritated me, and it's in my top five. So I started to think about all the times where I probably talk to people so interested, when they don't want me to. And am I reading their nonverbals and am I honoring their strengths to turn mine down a little bit? Um, so I wanted to give him a little bit of, your woo communication is really in my space right now. But I didn't. I just listened. He asked me all kinds of questions like, were you here for the eclipse? And I was like, no. And then I would say things like, no. And then here it turn around again. <laughs> So, if you kayak man are watching, sorry. It was super annoying, and if I see you in the lake again, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm not kidding. It There's made no me mad. There, my, there was no. none. none. Wow. Wow. It's also Friday. A little bit sassy, <laughs> crabby today. So, let's talk about Love Crazy Envy. Mm-hmm. So, this is a cool activity that, um, that I've been doing a lot. I've been doing some strengths development with my church. And, it's a large church staff, and so it's um, so in a meeting with teams, I have been doing this exercise because I think it helps give language um, to to both sides of strengths, not just the two sentence definition that's positive and that's very surface level, but it helps us understand the nuances and the differences between strengths within individuals and within teams, and so. Um, what it does is um, we'll send this out to you guys. Um, and I just use the front page. There's also a back page talking about then your partnerships, which is a cool um, exercise as well. But this front page, Love Crazy Envy, this exercise, it asks you to answer two questions. And the first is identify one of your signature themes, which signature themes means your top five. Identify one of your signature themes that you love and what is it about this thing that you appreciate. And then the second question is identify one of your signature themes that can drive you or others crazy and explain. And so when I intro this, I literally just say answer these two questions. And sometimes maybe I'll say, you know, you know, it has to, I mean, it has to be your top five. So I give these stipulations, but I always am waiting to see people's reactions. And oftentimes I have to correct language because it's the one that I like and the one that I don't like, or the one that I like and the one that I hate. And so I, yes. in the, we do this activity, and then once you answer those two questions, then you have people partner up and talk to one another about it, and there's a little grid on the bottom for you to put the name of the person you're talking to and what strength of theirs they love and which one drives them or others crazy. So you can explain that a little bit. And so in after I have people talk to one another, and I say it's, it helps us get to know the strengths of the room. Because we can, even if you don't know your top five really well, um, it's still, you know enough about it that, um, um, and, and 
through the day you'll get to learn enough about it but most of them have known their top five that I've worked with before but there are you know 29 other strengths right. and so it's helping you get to know strengths that are different than yours and even if someone happens to have the same top five as you in the same order of one in 33 million chance mm -hmm. um, their strengths are still gonna look different right and they still might choose a different one for love and a different one for crazy or even if they choose the same ones, there's going to be different reasons why they love yes. or why it drives them crazy because they're different people. So, and you, I think you could do this without even knowing your Gallup strengths. Yep. You Just use words mm -hmm. to describe your talents and your strengths that you, you know, you love yeah. about yourself. Mm -hmm. And what do you think drives others crazy? And I think yeah. what would be cool about something like that is then how well they lined up yeah. with what their actual top That's five were. Because I think people can really identify with this is who I am. But what we often get from um, mentors is the response, this makes my spouse crazy. This made my parents crazy. Yep. Um, my coworkers say this makes them crazy. I mean, that seems to be more identifiable yep. than the love mm -hmm. and the self awareness Definitely. And I think the other interesting thing when I, um, when I do this activity with people is that um, I always am on the notice for how quickly people can filter and put one strength in each of these. And I think I always make that observation because I think that that is a very, like, not to discount it, a very beginner level of strength knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because every single one of your top five can fall in both. Mm -hmm. And um, it's under it's a depth of understanding when you can explain them both as a strength that you love and a strength that drives you crazy. And so I think that when people are like, oh yeah, this is definitely the one that I love and this is definitely one that drives me and others crazy. Afterwards, um, I'm like, that's awesome that you know that, that you can give language to that, but, but let's get to a place where we understand how and why we love all of them and why they benefit us and why they benefit others. And then let's also get to a point where we understand how other people receive our strengths. Right. Because we are not just ourselves. We interact with other people all the time. So understanding mm -hmm. how people, yeah, how people interact with those and why it might drive you crazy or other people crazy. So Okay. So do you want to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So I usually give people a little more time, but for the sake of this, and because we know our strengths a little well, um, we'll just answer them and okay. talk. So All right. then, when I would, uh, when you kind of break up to do this strength scavenger hunt, is then what this bottom part is called. You would just say, "Hey, pair up with somebody around you," um, and then you continue to rotate. So you'll talk to people that you know well, because people usually sit next to people that they um, know well or want to sit next to. You'll have those conversations, but then have them switch up. And there are two. There are six. Spaces. So you can have up to six conversations. A side note, you've heard me say people like to sit in their pods. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by pod? Yeah. What? Hmm. Peas in a pod? Yes. Yeah! Like okay. a pea pod. You know, like just a little pod. piece in a pod. That's uh -huh. how so people sit in their pods. I have multiple. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, Allie, tell me what is a strength of your signature moves that you love and why do you appreciate it? I wrote down empathy and I drew a little heart um, because I feel and I sense the emotions of others. That's why awesome. I love it. And I think it's a superpower for me sometimes. Um, very intuitive, very can sense things. Makes sense. Awesome. And what's the strength that drives you or other people crazy sometimes? Input drives people crazy um, because it means that I ask a lot of questions. So I drew a question mark with a heart, my favorite new graphic. Um, Questions mean I care, questions mean I'm interested, questions mean um, I would love more information about that, but my questions can come off sometimes as judgmental, like I'm not believing or I need um, proof of something. So I understand that my questions can come off as um, that I don't trust the person. Yeah. So I know, I know that drives everyone in my life crazy. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of input, which isn't just the question asking, it's the fact that I remembered CBS Sunday morning. Yeah. And I want to like put that in my little card catalog of information that later on I'll be like, oh yeah, did you know about that? Did you know about that? Um, so the questions are all also offerings, which I, not everybody would like <laughs> my offerings of information. Then that's when you also have to be aware of the number yes. of people. Yes. <laughs> I love that, I love that your question is did you know? 
Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Tess. Mm -hmm. Tell me which one of your top five that you love. All of them. Um, <laughs> I'm the winner. You only chose one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> because the direction <laughs> I said. know, I know. I know. I did put one. Um, identify one of your signature things that you love. I put learner. Totally. Um, I love my learner because I, I think I'm like one of the only people that loves to be in a classroom. And, and learner looks different for different people. Um, and some learners are, I love to be in a classroom. But I, I love to, to dig into something where it gets to a level of mastery. I love to get to a place of a solid understanding where it then, could then turn around and teach it to somebody else. And so, um, and, and what, why I love learner um, is because, and I appreciate learner because I, I talk about it like a sponge like learner I just can soak up information so well and all information it's not like I'm being exclusive to you know I can cater it to what I'm fascinated by but if someone gives me a stat about a batting average like I can remember that and it might make me curious about that athlete and I'm I'm not a baseball fan you know right. but but I can learn and I can remember and I can soak up those things quickly I love the sponge reference I was mm -hmm. thinking could you draw one um, what what theme do you think drives yourself or someone else crazy? I uh, put my context, and it was a similar reason you put your input, um, because I ask questions. But instead of asking, like you asked, did you know, I ask why. And I think that that can drive other people crazy because it might come off as, it might be construed or perceived as me undermining their authority. When I ask the question, why, if someone gives me a task, well, why? Like, it isn't like, well, why, you know, because I don't, right. I don't want to do it. It's a help me see the intent and the purpose behind that task that you've asked of me. And when I know that, and the long definition of context says you need to see the blueprints. When I see the blueprints of anything, um, when I see what the original purpose and intent was, it will help me have so much more ownership and so much more engagement mm -hmm. in what I do. Like I will do it significantly more successfully, even if I do it like the exact same way, but it's because I have a buy-in for mm -hmm. it, because I understand why. And I love that you said what's behind it, which context is it's in the past. Yeah, in the yeah. past, in the past. Love that. Yeah, yes. Okay. So that is what, um, that is what I do, and then I debrief. But there is one more question to the sheet. But I don't like the word envy because it's a, you know. Wish for. Yes, which, which strength, because all of our strengths are beautiful, and they're mm -hmm. all us, and even though it would be cool to have one strength, I don't think it is worth any bit of your energy to envy other people's strengths because we're all awesome. So um, I usually so phrase it as, with what, what of the 34 themes do you wish was a little bit higher for you, easier mm -hmm. for you to grab? Because hmm. you can grab them all. Yeah. Um, which one's easier to grab? Um, I usually, uh, when I ask kind of this question, I usually ask, which one do you have a newfound appreciation of mm. because of the conversations? Which one have oh, you good. learned about? Um, which questions um, or which strength did you not know a whole lot about? Or which strength, and then I usually ask that and allow time for debrief. And then I also usually ask, were there strengths that you knew about, but someone described in a new way that helped enlighten your understanding of and that's that strength? So, because the strengths learning is forever. Forever. Yes, mm -hmm. that's such a great so, yeah. way to do that. But this one, um, this question says, identify one theme your colleagues share that you wish was more dominant in you. So like you mentioned, or that you envy in others. Be prepared to describe why this theme is valuable to others. So just gives language to help debrief the conversations that you had help people share their learning. And I think it also is just a place for affirmation of other people's mm -hmm. strengths yes. that are different than yours. Yes. Which is always always a good thing. And I think it, it lends some understanding to um, be careful what you wish for. Um, I will often hear people say, oh, I wish I had higher woo. And I'm like, no, you don't. Because it's not, it, just the understanding of, it's kind of the grass is greener mm -hmm. concept all the time. Exactly. Um, there are pieces yep. to woo that are not always easy. Um, there are pieces to all of these strengths that aren't always easy to balance. So I think that grass is greener mentality, it's important to know that if you're in that particular setting, it might not, might not be that. Um, I love this activity. I think it's a great one. I think it's a great intro one, but I also yep. think it's a great follow-up. Yep. Um, could be great with teams. 
Yep. So we will send a PDF out about that. Um, the other activity we wanted to talk about today um, is strengths in time. So do you want to just intro that? Sure. All right. So this is, we're calling it an activity. It's, it's just kind of like conversation starters and to help you bring um, a new lens to view your strengths through, I think. So this is something I've been musing about the last couple of weeks. Um, musing. Um, so I've been, yeah, it's just kind of been mulling um, in my brain a little bit as I've been interacting with a lot of different people who have different strengths um, than I do. And really, um, strengths in relation to time, I think, has kind of two, two like categories within it when we talk about strengths in time. And the first is really what, which direction is the strength going? Okay. So some strengths go backwards, some strengths are really kind of present, and some are really forward. Like which, which are they facing? Which time frame um, is the strength facing? And then the second category to really look at is the pace at which the strength moves. And, um, and I think that, yes, you can look at these independently with strengths, but I think looking at that as looking at the composite, the whole top five, and to say which direction do you normally face and which pace do you move at, uh, I think is really, is, is such a beneficial thing mm -hmm. to look, especially when you understand team dynamics, when you're looking at people who work together to understand, oh, they move at a slower pace and are backwards facing, or oh, they are forward facing and they move at a really quick pace. It, right. It's just more language to understand these strengths and the nuances of them. And it's great self-awareness when you start to see these as true tools, mm -hmm. if you can identify the direction and the pace. Mm -hmm. um, when I was thinking about pace, I was always I was also thinking about how quickly do I grab one of them? Mm -hmm. Is there one here that I grab quicker than the others? Um, so it comes to me at a uh, more yeah. rapid pace. Definitely. So, in in explaining those, so really the direction of the strength, um, really. So one of the examples um, would be uh, maybe a least likely pair of context versus futuristic. And you can think about that, that context is about history, it's about the past, and so naturally, I lead with that, I'm gonna be facing backwards. I'm gonna be looking back. And it doesn't mean that I'm like stuck in the past, I mean, that's a barrier label of, of context, but, but that's my direction. My mode and my energy is derived from turning back mm -hmm. and reflecting mm -hmm. and looking backwards. Whereas someone with futuristic, um, when you think about um, a uh, person that I just met, um, his name is Steven, and he works um, at the church, and um, he is high futuristic. And so he is, he, I, I laughed and I joked, and I'm like, oh yes, you probably have a five-year and a 10-year plan, and these things mapped out. He's like, oh, a lifetime plan, a 40-year plan, more like it, and he's kind of a younger guy, and so it was just funny, because I had to laugh, I'm like, that's so futuristic. I couldn't even begin to contemplate like a week long plan versus like he has like a 40 year plan mapped out and so he is naturally and is going to derive the most energy and exude the most energy by directionally facing forward and then there are strengths that are kind of um directionally just present they're not necessarily forward or backwards facing um and one strength like that is adaptability and that's why i love that mm -hmm. you know you these are yeah these hyper are hyper of the present yeah, it's, it's present focused and, and there are definitely um, other strengths that can look like that way too. It doesn't mean you're exclusively defined in one category. So right. even though I lead with context and I am backwards facing, I also have adaptability, which is a present focus, a present facing. And so I, I definitely lead with both of those um, kind of directions. So what do you think about strengths that might be all three, backward facing, forward mm -hmm. facing, and present? There's one strength that comes to mind for me in my top five and in yours that I think is all three. Yeah, strategic, yes. definitely. And so I often see strategic most primarily as forward facing because you're looking at, like you're looking at all of the options which would be present facing, but then you're making a decision. And that, it, you have to take a step forward to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And that's where the power of strategic really comes mm -hmm. in is the ability to so sift through and pathway. figure out the best pathway really quickly. Um, but patterns mm -hmm. is, I mean, in my well, head, you have to kind of look backward mm -hmm. to look at patterns because patterns are developed over over time. time. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking right away, 
strategics in the moment. Strategics also mm -hmm. sometimes looking back for patterns and looking Definitely. forward for pathways. And I think that it would come out more dominantly, differently based on the other okay. top, mm -hmm. other strengths in your top five. So where your strategic might look a little more forward facing, like we talk about, more like pathways, mine is going to look backwards a little bit right. because I have context and I have learner and these strengths that maybe will pull me back to look at patterns mm -hmm. more so than pathways. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little side note, a 40 year old plan for a 40 year plan for me would be that I would be 82. Oh, you will definitely make it to 82. How old will you be? In 40 years, I will be 63. Hmm. Just a little side note. So anyway, that's very nice. My strategic um, was like, oh, I'm at midlife. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So, I'll look ahead for pathways to not think about being in a midlife situation. So then the pace. Yes. Uh, would be the second one. And um, really the idea of just seeing, you know, when you think about pace, even when you think about pacing as a runner, there mm -hmm. are different groups. There are the slower groups, there's the 12 minute mile, there's the eight minute, and then there's like all the way up to like right. eight minute, six minute mile. Um, and so it's just the, the speed at which you're going. And so there are certain strengths that are going to be slower. And so um, very very obvious examples would be the least likely pair of deliberative and activator. So deliberative is going to take a very slow pace because it's about thoughtful proce thoughtfully processing what is going on. And so that person, a person that leads with deliberative is going to look at all of the potential roadblocks and is going to stay exactly where they are until they have contemplated everything and feel okay with taking the next step out in any given direction. Then on the flip side, someone with activator is going to step forward yesterday, like is ready to keep mm -hmm. going and to charge ahead. And um, and one of um, one of the best quotes from one of my sessions this week um, was from a, a guy who's activator in competition in his top five. And he said in the signature theme and what he loves, the way he described it, he said, I love my activator because I have won the battle before anyone else is on the battlefield. I have won the war before anyone else is on the battlefield. That's what he said, and I was like, activator in competition. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've won the war before anyone else is even on the battlefield. Like, wow, there's no time making decisions. Beautifully stated yes. about that blend. Yes, oh my gosh, right? And so making decision comes in the action, in the moment. And so that a person with activator is constantly moving and constantly moving at a rapid pace. Uh, and so there's that difference in, in the pace at which you're moving. And I think that um, it definitely ca would categorize as slow versus quick moving. And I think that when you look at your blends, you could probably say if you're more quick or more slow based on your whole top five, but then you also could break down strength by strength and say, right. how does that, you know, almost do like a um, cost benefit analysis of like, right. This one's slow, this one's fast, so how does it end up in right. the end? Again, like, we're using them as tools. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking about, the, I, I don't know pace-wise, because input can be a slower pace, but it also, paired with communication, fires the questions. Mm -hmm. Just like boom, 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 boom. And also, because you're like constantly seeking information, you're mm -hmm. constantly gathering, you gather information much more quickly than anyone else would because it's natural to but you. But I will gather longer. Yes. I yeah. will spend you don't know when to stop. hours <laughs> on Pinterest looking for the exact right recipe because I looked at that one and I didn't know well, what about this one. Um, so sometimes it can be slowing. Yeah. Um, I think the empathy is very much a present pace mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, strategic probably is a little bit of slowing, slower pace. Mm -hmm. um, because I need to plan it out. Sure. Think. Mm -hmm. And in my kayak, I can do that when people aren't trying to talk to me. Um, and the woo is definitely fast-paced. Definitely fast-paced. Yep. Your communication is definitely fast-paced. Absolutely. Paced. And so I would categorize you as a more quicker-paced person. Really? I would. Because I think that Thank it's, you. it's interesting that you so describe... Oh, I'm glad that you like that. I do um, like that. It's interesting that you describe your strategic as slower, because I would describe it as more rapid. Because... The, the strength itself is the ability to make decisions really quickly. You know what the best path is to take. I think it's just what it, it and strategic is that strength yep. where it blends. It's a blender. It's a blender. And so, it blends with, with this yeah. to where I can't disregard any plan. I cannot Makes sense. not consider A, B, C, D to F 
So and that's what I love about even just having the conversation around this is because of that, your strategic is slow, my strategic is quick. Mm -hmm. It's very quick mm -hmm. because it is blended with my adaptability, taking into account any everything that's happening here, you know, everything that's going on to make a decision and to go. And I just, in my gut, know what to do and we'll just start doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was thinking about lots of conversations we've had before about that. You have that inner confidence to just go and do it based on yep. your strengths. Mm -hmm. And that's not, we're not talking about self-assurance. Nope. Um, so I was thinking about this in relationship to very menial tasks. Mm -hmm. So I think a way to do this and a way to talk about this is to break it down to a very simple, like how you go about buying groceries. How you drive your vehicle. How you drive your vehicle. What you're doing during your drive mm -hmm. time. Um, how you choose your outfits in the morning. Um, those kind of the night before. <laughs> the simplest of things, but also the grandest mm -hmm. of decision making. The strengths infiltrate everything. Everything. I mean, so yeah. an activity like this would be a great way for a mentor and mentee to talk about real life moments all the time. But then mm -hmm. you all, as a mentor, have moments where it's big decision making. It's grappling with decisions. How could you talk through that mm -hmm. to say, this is going to be the tool that's going to help you truly execute that decision? Mm -hmm. Will you do it at a slower pace? That's okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Who around you has some of those different strengths that maybe you can rely on? Mm -hmm. So I love this. I think it's um, a dialogue starter, um, an activity that's a dialogue starter mm -hmm. that says, um, you know, let's talk about what direction and let's talk about the pace and I think as mentors we we constantly want to have meaningful conversations mm -hmm. um, where we know you know something is making a difference and sometimes it's hard to do that without being prescriptive about it this is such a great way to have a meaningful conversation and have continued dialogue around strengths that has intention without mm -hmm. being prescriptive cool. so Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you good places to begin strengths development with your chapter or with a larger group of mentors or even just in your own mentoring relationship. And we will uh, wrap it up with um, an email that has this um, conversation starter and then a PDF copy of Love Crazy Envy um, so that you can try it out with someone close to you or you can send it out to your mentors if you would like to do that. Super excited about the blog. We have a bunch of guest bloggers, which is fantastic. And if you are interested in doing any kind of guest blogging, um, I recently asked um, a co worker to, to do a guest blog on my personal yeah. uh, blog as well. And so I love blogging. Can't imagine why I, I love that, but I do. Um, but we love the feedback about both um, Jenna Millie and the blog. And um, if there are ideas that you have for things that you'd like to hear us talk about, um, besides what 42 plus 40 is, um, we would love to hear that. Last week, I didn't. I watched it all the way through until like about the end. I had no idea that the kayak photo was in there. And it, um, I may have to borrow that for my Christmas card. Your real Christmas. My card. real Christmas card. This Bye, is everybody. Like <laughs> See ya.